So continuing our conversation about geographic coordinate systems, um, they are a great way to store data. It's a simple setup. The coordinates, is, the coordinates are somewhat universally understood. Um, and it's just kind of a common way for us to store data. Um, for those of you who took the intro class, 16 and 10, you'll remember the uh, Northern Shoveler Duck data that we imported from the USGS. Those were all stored in um, the North American Datum of 1983, and then we had to convert them or project them into data that we could actually measure distances in. So a common way to store and collect data, like I said, all the GPSs are set for WGS84, your phone's collect in, in WGS84. It's just very typical. Uh, let's see here, there we go. Uh, okay, so why don't we use geographic coordinate systems in a GIS very often? Well, number one, they make kind of ugly printed maps. You get this kind of robotic, stretched, um, planar looking um, output, I think. Um, you, you get a lot of distortion in the north. Minnesota um, does not have this wonky, stretched stuff up here. Montana isn't nearly that um, short and wide. So I think it's kind of a misrepresentation when we look at things in map form. And the, yeah, the distortion only increases with latitude or as we get down toward the South Pole. For distance and area calculations, like I said, longitude aren't uniform units of measure, and long longitude and how it relates to latitude also, um, it's a relationship that it can't be maintained over the sphere. So we, uh, our GIS just has a hard time doing that, and I'm assuming that that's going to change pretty quickly here as computing only increases in power, but for right now, we really can't do a lot of distance and area calculations in, in a geographic coordinate system. Rasters turn in to be, um, they turn out to be quite a problem. Raster cells, like I said, that are supposed to be square end up being kind of trapezoidal, uh, rectangular, and it just doesn't work. So, when we're working in a GIS, we take our geographic coordinate systems and um, apply math and project them into different coordinate systems that help us preserve metrics that we're working with, um, that help model things even visually for us. We deal with projected coordinate systems in a GIS. And you can see already this is much more what we're, what, I guess, what we're typically used to seeing for a map of the continental U.S. All right, so what is a projection? A projection is, um, if you look at this kind of thing, imagine you've got a sphere and you stick a light bulb inside it and then wrap some kind of flat surface around it, shine the light through the globe, and you end up with a flat surface. You can unroll this flat surface, and that's your projection. That's, that's where it gets that term, is you think of it as a light projector. I don't know if that's where it gets it or not, but that's what I'm going to say. At the heart of it, though, uh, projections are just math. It's math that happens behind the scenes. ArcGIS takes care of it for us. There are people that do the math, obviously, and set it all up, but I'm certainly not going to be that person. Um, and I'm not going to force you to think through any of the uh, math that goes into a projection. But the idea is to take a curved surface, apply some kind of math that makes it a flat surface, that we can then get away from latitude, longitude, apply a regular Cartesian grid with a zero origin, units of measure, and straight xy coordinates. So it's simplifying this curved surface. But remember, everything has to start here because the Earth is curved. So all data has at its heart a geographic coordinate system. Remember, think geometry, angles, degrees, the curved surface. But in GIS, we overwrite that curved surface and transform it into a flat surface so that we can make measurements and deal with rasters more easily. Um, know that you often can't see the results for projection on the screen. Um, you will often see some kind of shift from this to this, but if you're looking at this, you can't tell if it's a projection that's preserving distances or preserving areas or preserving shape. They'll all look the exact same, but if you ran calculations measuring a distance across it versus measuring an area, you're going to get very different results. That's an important thing to know. All right, projections come at a cost. So we can't flatten a curved surface without tearing it or stretching it like we saw with the lines of longitude, pulling them apart and displaying them as parallel, you get a lot of stretching. So you're going to have some sort of distortion when you do this math. And that's just, that's just life. 
So what to keep in mind, all projections have a geographic focus. This is going to um, depend in large part on the datum or the geographic coordinate system that has helped us define the curved surface. And they're going to they're going to strive to preserve at least one type of metric or measurement. So what would we expect a good map to have? We would expect it to be accurate in distances or in angles or showing us truly where north is or, or areas. Ideally, it's going to be really good and accurate at showing us all of those things, but a, a projection is going to preserve at least one of those very well. All right, so these are some of those um, wish lists of what we, we would hope a map would be good at would be showing us true areas, true distances, true shapes, true, direc true, <laughs> true directions. But projections do distort these things. When you go from round to flat, that's just what happens. So that's something to keep in mind. And at the end of this, uh, with the PDF that I'm going to create of this, I'm going to have a lot of detailed slides to kind of talk um, more specifically about how those metrics are preserved and which uh, coordinate systems do better at preserving different metrics. All right, so these are what these, um, these flattened surfaces look like, just kind of conceptually, this is what we're talking about. We take a globe, we can lay a piece of paper that's flat and shine a light through and get kind of azimuthal sort of uh, projections. We can have conic projections or cones, and this is what they would unroll like. You don't unroll a flat one, but... Um, and then you can have a cylindrical that's going to unroll into a flat thing like this. So that's just kind of the, the biggest, um, most broad example that I can think of. I'm going from spherical coordinates, just to drive the point home one more time, spherical coordinates being latitude, longitude, described as degrees because we're talking about angles or geometry, um, versus a Cartesian grid, which has an origin and just uh, a straight XY kind of uh, description going away from an origin. Okay, so how big is Greenland? This is an example of the world shown in a geographic coordinate system. And I just want to point out that Greenland is often quite distorted when we look at maps. Um, it's always shown way bigger than it actually is. India is over 3 million square kilometers. Greenland is only 2 million square kilometers, and yet it's often shown as, as absolutely trumping. Sometimes it looks as big as South America. So this is a geographic coordinate system. <clears throat> Again, notice all the stretching in the north and the south because the lines of longitude are displayed as parallel. So you get that pulling apart. Now if you had to guess, what kind of projection would you say this is, just generally speaking? I mean, hopefully you can see that if you took this flat piece of, you know, quote unquote paper and put it together, you'd get a cone. So this is a conic projection. And you can see that it's getting Greenland more into alignment with how big it really is relative to India. So this is technically called, a, this is a projected coordinate system, it's the North America Albers Equal Area Conic. Now all you can really see here is that it's probably based in North America because that's the kind of center of this, of this layout and that it's a conic projection. But you really don't know that it's an equal area. You'd have to know that from looking at the coordinate system. You can't tell that. An equal area, an equal distance. Um, conformal conic are all going to look essentially the same. But this one behind the scenes is doing math to preserve um, area over distance measurements. So it's going to do math to help us get the most accurate area calculations that we can. And it's going to um, have the minimal amount of distortion over North America because that's also where it's focused. All right, so distortion patterns, I think this is just more interesting to look at. Um, so just stop and take a look at it. Um, but these are the different types of projections. We've got cylinders. Um, it's showing you that you get the least amount of distortion at the pole because that's where your surface is touching the sphere. As the paper gets farther away or the developable surface gets farther away from the globe, this is where our distortion increases. So it's showing you you've got the most amount of distortion um, at the northern and southern latitudes, less around the equator. Now, this has a place where the um, developable surface intersects the sphere twice instead of just touching once. Um, and this helps us get two areas of low distortion, medium distortion in the middle, and then really high distortion at the poles. So this is a pretty typical um, mathematical model to set up. Um, so same thing goes here. You can have a place where your 
your flat surface intersects the globe where you get a different area. So the point is you can pick different projections um, to minimize the distortion in the region of the world that you want to have the most accurate measurements, right? So yeah, take a look at these and, and just try and make sense of what they're showing you, but they're um, yeah, pretty standard. All right, so these points at which the developable surface touches the sphere is called a standard line or a secant. It's the place, it's the only place on the map where the, the scale, the distortion is zero or the scale is true. It's where the projection surface touches the globe or intersects the globe. Along that line, the map has no distortion. The scale is identical to the nominal globe, if that makes sense. As you move away from those points, distortion increases. I'm going to pause there again.